The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. As the striper season winds down and the focus turns to TOG, the weather could be an issue for this weekend. Let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. Thanks, Tim. Hey, Anglers Meteorologist Rich Von Allen here at News 12 Long Island Weather Center. Wish I had some better news for the weekend, but I don't. And this one's going to be a doozy. I don't think it's going to be a great November weekend. Uh, start out with water temps. It was cold during the week. 40s now, Great South Bay, 50s in the ocean. Those temps coming down. The fish are on the move, but also the wind is on the move. We have a northeast and easterly breeze basically the entire weekend. Saturday, maybe you can sneak out early with that north-northeast, and it goes more east-northeast. Look at the seas, 4 to 7, 7 to 12. Likely to be um, gale warnings or maybe small crafts up. It's not going to be great. Again, the purple, the big colors coming in right through Sunday. There'll be some sun, at least uh, on Saturday. It's going to be a little cold to start. Maybe early morning, you can do it until about you know, mid-morning, but again, those seas are going to pick up ahead of the storm coming in. The gradient increases, isobars increase. This is a coastal storm here just offshore, and that means a rough weekend on the way. It's, again, not going to be good. Probably going right into Monday of next week. So sorry for the bad news, but you know what? Still some weeks to go here in the fall season. There'll be better days. Tim, back to you. Be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out. Now let's check in with Senior Editor Fred Galafaro with this week's Surf Report. Yeah, Tim, the uh, surf's still hot. You know, loads of those small fish, 20 to 27 inches, all the way down the south side of the island from Southampton all the way to Breezy Point. Uh, Montauk has loads of fish out in the rips, but not on the beach. There's been one or two shots. There are days on the beach. Like Saturday, there are fish up on the north side. But again, that south side of the island, attracting a lot of casters, especially places like Smith Point, Finns, Robert Moses, uh, getting good crowds of casters work in those areas. <clears throat> uh, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, you know, very good. In those areas Monday again Monday was good and even Tuesday afternoon uh, Tuesday afternoon when we had that snow coming down there was some good fishing at, uh, at Robert Moses and Democrat uh, and also at uh, Smith Point I know guys who are at Smith Point did very well that day also uh, fish up on the North Fork same thing 20 27 inch fish for the most part occasional keepers mixed in everywhere maybe up to 30 inches uh, I did have reports of some bigger fish, 15 to 25 pounds, coming from the bays. Uh, that's the back of Shinnecock, the back of Mariches, and also uh, the back of uh, Robert Moses. Nighttime stuff on live eels or swimming plugs, but I tell you, we've had some pretty cold nights. Uh, you got to be pretty hungry to fish some of these nights right now. But uh, there are a few of those better fish around if you want to concentrate on them. If you've had your fill with schoolies, something else to look at. Um, Again, up on the North Fork, uh, places like Hortons, Truman's, uh, Petty's Bay, Orient, Mulford Point, uh, Kenny's Beach, uh, all places worth checking out up there. Uh, be careful with your parking, pay attention to the signs. Uh, they can be strict up there even this time of the year at <coughs> times. And uh, again, Montauk, as I said, a lot of fish in the rips. The good news is that all those fish, and I, there are a load of them. I've been talking to Savio Mizzi. He's been out in his boat every day. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, and he said it's just unbelievable. He's been sending me vid videos, and it just looks like just acres and acres of bass spread over there. Again, all those small fish, but they got to come down the South Shore yet, and it uh, looks like we should have some good fishing for at least another few weeks. Tim, over to you. Looks like a nice blackfish bite is still going on on the east end, so let's get right back to Fred Galafar with the latest from Montauk. Hey Tim, and yeah, uh, Montauk, still excellent black fishing. Most of the boats are running to the north, up around Fishers Island, Plum Island, but there's also been some good catches made around Block, and also some of the local rock piles. Fish up to 10, 11 pounds for the most part, and uh, limits, you know, pretty common. Uh, sea bass, still Block Island, that's the place to go for the sea bass. Still some big porgies mixed in over there and increasing numbers of cod, cod up into the teens also mixing with the blackfish and porgies. So all good news for that. Bass-wise, no big fish, but all the small fish you could want. The rips have been loaded. Been speaking with uh, Savio Mizzi, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, just acres of bass all over the top. Great light tackle fishing. Uh, very, very few keepers. Most of the fish 20 to 27 inches, and that's pretty much the story all around the island. 
But um, if you want to get into some great light tackle action, uh, that's the place to be. The fish have not been in the surf other than one or two occasions, but uh, it, this is all boat fishing out 20, 30 feet of water from the mouth of the harbor all the way to the lighthouse and at times down the south side. And that's the story for my talk, Tim. Now let's check in with Mike Dean from Shinnecock. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Uh, fishing's been really, really great here. Uh, a lot of action, not really big fish, uh, but consistent. Um, A27s with the green tubes, white bucktails, definitely use a teaser, a lot of double headers going on. Uh, just really feisty fish, a lot of fun to uh, catch. Most of them are in the 26, 28 inch range. Uh, there's some bigger fish that were in the bay. I'm pretty sure that this cold weather has pushed them out. Steve from Basil Surf Casting just had a monster last week. Well deserved. Uh, Steve and all those guys fish really hard all season and through the night and uh, he was rewarded with a really beautiful fish. So, uh, you know, some of those big fish might still be, you know, in the bay working their way out. So uh, definitely might have a shot at them this weekend. Blackfish also going pretty strong. A lot of the wrecks east of Shinnecock and also on the reef. A uh, decent amount of keepers are coming up there. Uh, jigs, conventional uh, green white crabs, they're, they're hungry and they're chewing. Uh, also, the jig bite has slowed down a little bit closer to Shinnecock, but as you move west to Mauritius and a little bit past Fire Island, there's still some uh, nice fish to be had. I'm sure there's a video making its way around from Monday that was just uh, hundreds of striped bass feeding on top. So uh, we'll see what this cold snap does. Hopefully it didn't really cause uh, too much of a disruption in the fall run. There's a lot of small fish in Montauk, so we should be good for a couple of weeks. Fingers crossed. Get out there. Catch them up. Have fun. From the eastern Great South Bay, we have Kirk Fay. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everybody. The weather coming up looks kind of uh, pretty nasty, to be honest with you. So you're not going to get many opportunities, I think, with the next week. However, you can fish Thursday and Friday. Um, it definitely looks doable. I will be out there. Uh, we've had a lot of success using something this small. Um, we are certainly trying to match the hatch. This is only three inches long. Um, this is a Z-Man product, which has incredible stretch to it. Uh, a lot of these bass are feeding on top uh, on rain bait this small. That's why they're being finicky. you really got to match the hatch and go smaller. Uh, my buddy Bob, who was fishing me the other day, everyone talks about there's no big fish around. He pulled a 37-pounder out of, of, of fish, you know, boiling on top of the water, feeding on rain bait just like this. If you want to go a little bigger, here's about a 5-inch. And what we do with these is we have them on another rod, drop them down when you have fish under the boat because they just don't seem to want to take a jig. And this will help you get a little deeper to a little larger and uh, pick up fish maybe towards the bottom. But be very careful. There's a lot of dog fish around. But the nice thing about these Z-Mans, they could take a beating. See you out there. Now let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti from the Great South Bay and Fire Island area. Hey, Tim. Fire Island this weekend looking like Friday is going to be the best day to fish. Saturday and Sunday are going to be really windy, so it's going to be on the tough side. Um, a lot of small striped bass inside in the bay, a couple of keepers mixed in with them. Uh, I've been fishing with spot and, and catching plenty of fish with a, a keeper or two mixed in. Some fish 15 to 18 and a couple of fish over 20 pounds, just like maybe 22 pounds. So. I would say that would be the primary target for this weekend. Uh, and like I said, Friday's going to be the day. Saturday and Sunday are going to be really tough with some heavy northeast blows. But there are places you can hide from that. And uh, let's see. The black fishing bite is good in the ocean. The bay is not so hot now. It's getting a little bit cold. So the ocean will be the place. But again, I think it's only going to be a Friday, a Friday fishing event this week. So get out there and have fun. Catch them up and be safe. If you're looking for a quality fishing boat, one that's affordable, check out a Seapro powered by Suzuki. For less than $400 a month, get you into all the action. Visit Kale's Family Boating Center for a test ride today. With our Jones Inlet report, we have Gage Simon. Thanks, Tim. With temperatures dropping and wind gusting, it seems like the larger bass have scattered to deeper waters, while action on the schoolies remains okay. Anglers that headed west landed keepers, and anglers that fished the working birds east of the jetty and east of the theater caught schoolies on diamond jigs and lead heads with soft plastics. While action from the surf slowed down this weekend, with reports of a few smaller bass landed as the birds and the body of fish remained out of reach from the shoreline. 
At 7 a.m. on Veterans Day, Captain David and U.S. veteran Captain Brandon Hines headed south of the Pink Hotel into 35 feet of water, landing schoolies and dogfish. They switched from jigging to trolling green spoons and white mojos, landing more schoolies and dogs, even on the spoons. At 3.30, they got a call from a buddy on a huge pot of bunker with large bass under it. They hauled in several keepers and brought these two home for dinner. While Captain Joe on Big Boy's Toys, a 45-foot sea hunter, put Angler Jen on this 42-inch keeper on a yellow and white bunker spoon in 45 feet of water off the Pink Hotel. Way to go, Jen. Captain Adam on the Tuna Cartel, a 34-foot regulator, crushed the bass this week, totaling nine bass with the biggest 37 pounds caught on a magical mojo. Togging remains strong whether you're dropping green crabs you picked up from Kathy at Freeport Bait and Tackle at the bridges or you're heading offshore jigging the wrecks. Loads of shorts with Sharpies able to haul in the limit, fish averaging from four to eight pounds. That's all for this week. Wishing everybody bent rods and tight lines and I'll see you out on the water. From Oceanside, let's check in with Captain Joey Leggio. Hey Tim, what's going on? Tonight's report, we got our little friend Frankie with us. Say hi Frankie. Hi. And saying hi to Timmy. All right. So, reports out of Deb's Inlet. Uh, before this cold front came in, the bass fishing was actually pretty good. So, on Saturday, I took out Jim Ryan and his family. The guys wanted to get some stripers on the troll. And uh, they did just that. We trolled right outside Deb's Inlet in the 45-foot depths. And the guys had their limited bass. Uh, with the biggest going 25 pounds. Actually, as we were trolling back towards the inlet, the guys had a nice double header of a 23 and a 25-pounder to end their trip, which was pretty nice. The following day, I took out Ira, Mike, who would have Mitch and Tony out. Guys who wanted to go uh, black fishing, shot over to AB Reef and some pretty nautical conditions. Actually, she probably shouldn't even been out there, but we did it anyway. Um, it was tough conditions, but the guys did connect with eight keeper blackfish to five and a half pounds and also some real nice jumbo sized porgies. Again, there's been a tremendous body of Dogfish, it was like in the springtime or the summer, we were blessed with tremendous amounts of blowfish, and now we're being cursed with this massive amount of dogfish that are just eating everything. Uh, really bad. I mean, every day you're going out, you're probably catching a solid 50 dogfish in the mix. Okay, on the following day, Monday, I had out Ari, Nick, and Avi. Guys did not want to troll. I left all the trolling gear home, just took out some spinning rods, some top water plugs, and the guys had a bl us catching uh, 20 or so stripers all on surface, uh, surface poppers, um, Zara spooks. Anything that was surface using metal lip swimmers and the bass were hitting everything. Basically, finding the bunker schools, casting all on the outskirts of those bunker schools and connecting with the bass. That day, the biggest we had was only about 18 pounds, but the guys had a blast doing it. Other than that, that's my report. Uh, I know we have this cold weather that just came through. I will be heading out tomorrow, and I'll give a report next week, and I'll let you know how that bass fishing is. Other than that, that's it, and uh, we're out. Say bye, Frankie. Bye, <laughs> Take care, Tim. Bye-bye. With our fly report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. Here I am down at Jones Beach. I'm doing my wet weighted challenge and uh, it's interesting. I can't believe the temperature dropped 20 degrees today. Well, anyway, uh, to get on the report, I got a good call from a friend of mine who says in the back bays on the North Shore, plenty of uh, bass in the high 20s. Uh, all flies, surprisingly, it's all during the day. The action's all during the day. Now down in the freshwater scene, I was actually took a day and I went up to a, a small stream up in Connecticut with a good friend of mine, uh, Kenny, and uh, I didn't have any luck. He had one. My other friends had fish. I ran into uh, quite a few uh, people up there and they said it's been pretty good. I mean, any day now is, is a bonus. We're going to be up still heading next week and the Syracuse had snow today. but. You know what? I can't wait because those fish are phenomenal to catch. Terrific fish to catch and they're doing well. Walter and Roy just came back and they, they had a lot of hookups. Only landed seven, but that's pretty good. So until next week, tight lines. Chris Ludwig, what's going on in your world? Hey, thanks Tim. What's going on guys? So this last week, the weather was not very compliant. There were a couple of really cold nights, including tonight. 
but the fishing seemed to still be pretty good. Over on the open beach, there were schools of sand eels. I'm speaking on the west end of Jones, and I'm speaking from the inlet side. Um, observed schools of sand eels with birds over them and very small fish inside them, probably schooly size. Maybe the biggest fish I've saw this week was 21, 22 inches. I know a little ways off the beach, getting a little deeper, about 20, 30 feet. There's been some guys throwing top water, doing very well. on uh, just following school of baiting birds out there. There's been some quality fish still coming up. And rumors of green bonita around too. But backing up from there, heading behind the inlet into the bridges, there's still some small fish on the lights. You could always count on those. Uh, local fish will definitely be there. So when times get tough, I could throw little jigs, like you know, a small version of this crippled herring. By the way, this is what I'm using on the open beach. This is a good representation of a sand eel, and especially when I'm trying to get deep, fast, and far. So next week, hopefully things will be better, and I think there's still fish to be caught. Take care. From the Western Sound, we have a report from Raul Ortiz, the urban angler who informed me that the schoolie action is heating up with stripers in the 20 to 25 inch range. Now let's get the latest from Mark McGowan. Hey folks, thanks for having me back again for a report this week. I uh, just want to give an acknowledgement this past Veterans Day. Big shout out to all you veterans, both past and present, and uh, you're all dear to our hearts and we love you. Thank you very much for making America what it is and your personal sacrifices and uh, everything that you go through that many people probably don't understand. I'm, I, what more can I say? Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for making America great. Now on to the reports. Uh, fishing does not show any stoppage right now. I mean, on the, the beaches where the South Shore, the North Shore, we've still got a nice run of bass. I mean, these bass are small. I'm seeing a lot of like, I don't know, I call them goofy pictures. I, I can't understand why people have bogus and these giant fish grip lippers, whatever you call them, on 16 inch fish. I mean, come on, uh, some of these pictures, people look like they're standing 50, 60 feet away from the beach. Try not to get these fish all covered in sand. It's really not good for them. Throwing them 15 feet off a jetty into the water is not uh, calling yourself a catch and release guy. That's bowling. So, you know, treat the fish right accordingly. Um, if you got treble hooks, stop using them. Go to single hooks. A lot of these fish are on teasers. They're on single hooks. Crush the barbs. It really helps them get on their way. Tearing their mouth out, spending four minutes on taking a picture to impress your friends on Facebook. Just, uh, it doesn't cut the mustard. So, you know, what can I say? I'm not saying it as bitter. I'm just saying it as an experienced surf caster, as an experienced charter boat guy, and uh, as a tackle shop owner. So, you know, keep it real, guys, and keep it safe. And just enjoy yourself. Now, as far as the black fishing goes locally here, Eaton's Neck, all the way from up towards Connecticut, across the Smithtown Bay, it's just not stopping. I keep getting a lot of very happy customers. Unfortunately, my boat is down. As I said last week, when the stuff is not running smooth, this is not the time that, you know, your eyes roll over and you chase fish if your motors aren't working so well. Safety first, you know, my boat's in, it's being fixed. I was leaking some oil and that's always a bummer. So, you know what I mean? Go down to the beach and cast some stuff and have fun with these schooly bass. I like to use uh, rubber shads with a single hook or um, a little diamond jig with a teaser. I find these small fish are more uh, focused on the teaser anyway. So that's just the way it is. Um, as far as going into next week, we're going to have to see because with this storm, you know, with the weatherman, uh, major storm event, uh, major storm winter event, I, I don't get it. You know, uh, an inch of snow is not a major event. So, you know, I take it with a grain of salt. And um, for those hunters out there, this is a tough time because the fishing's red hot, but the, the deer are in the rut, you know. So a lot of guys there, how often can you go chase a deer or something? So it's like been mixed. Certain days you go hunting, other days you go fishing. It's just a part of an avid outdoor sportsman's life. So I wish you all uh, peace and uh, tight lines, and I will see you next week. From the central Long Island Sound, we have this great fishing action from Veterans Day. See, the vibe on this boat is ridiculously <laughs> sick. That was an awesome trip today. That's insane right there. <laughs> This is, this is an insane day. I want to go home. Like, epic. She's a good fish. You letting that go? Yeah, it's a female. Don't you just love that? Listen, that's some serious respect right there. Letting some fish go. The breeder fish so we can go back and have more fish to catch. 
Should we have some romance later? Yeah, how's it going? Get into the Zen mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Want that or you good? Yeah, that's a beautiful jig right there. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat contest like New England Fisherman subscribers Sam Dibner with 11.86 pound tog and Mark Alamina with the 7.4 pound tog. Long Island Fisherman subscribers weighed in some nice black fish as well. Tony Vernonola with this 11.45 pounder and Frank Diafidi is on the board again with this 9 pound tog. And finally Kevin Roth has placed with this 8.5 pound tog. Thanks for watching and see you right here next week. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude Lawrence Grand Prize Boat Package and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.